Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news and what you can expect this week in Star Citizen. From Cloud Imperium's post, February's free fly is in full swing and we want to take a moment to say thank you for being the most welcoming community in gaming. We've seen that many of you have already joined the guide system and made new citizens' first steps into the verse truly epic. So the guide system, for people that don't know, is a little area on the RSO website where you can get paired with someone to teach you um, how to do particular ga in-game mechanics or um, particular uh, sort of uh, gameplay or you want to learn something, I want to learn uh, mining, bam, it will pay you with someone, you go into game together and they will hopefully teach you how to do the mining uh, or whatever other gameplay mechanic or thing you want to be taught. If you didn't know as well, through February 25th, Star Citizen is completely free to download and play, so invite a friend to join you in the verse. But don't forget about the referral program, recruiting a friend, and we'll grant you both the Lodestone Armor and Sniper Rifle set from Quarinus Tech and Gemini for free. I've got a video on the free fly and there's a link to the free fly stuff all down below. It's just as simple as putting in a code um, in the free fly page to get access to the game and access to a load of ships, even if you already have the game. And don't forget to jump into the ongoing dynamic events running until March 6th. Um, so uh, that's both the Nine Towers Lockdown and the Jump Down 2.0. What else is happening this week? Tuesday, bam, we've got uh, Galactopedia expanding outwards uh, with a load more bits and bobs in there. Uh, Inside Star Citizen will be on Thursday with an origin story highlighting another CIG member, followed by an all-vehicle sprint report. Now, if it's someone at CIG that's doing something interesting, these uh, sort of origin stories could be pretty fun, pretty cool, um, but obviously sometimes it's not a huge amount of tangible information, it's more sort of like, this is a new developer, or this is a developer at CIG and they do some stuff, but we can't really tell you what they do, or it's not tangible, you know, so that we know what's going to uh, be in our hands anytime soon, or anything like that, but that's more from a development information standpoint from for me, this is what I'm hungry for, I want as much development information as possible, so um, hopefully uh, that'll be sort of interesting, um, and then that sprint report, I always love sprint reports, an all vehicle sprint report, yeah, cool, tell me where ships are. Um, yeah, fine. Ships are a huge portion of the gameplay in Star Citizen. So, uh, Friday, we've got Star Citizen Live. Now, um, this is going to have uh, EUPU. Um, so, this is the European uh, Persistent Universe gameplay feature team um, sort of answering questions. Um, that's going to be at 5 p.m. UTC on their Twitch. And there is a spectrum thread associated with this where you can post questions about things like, but not limited to, Mining, mining gadgets, life support, resource management and engineering, refueling, loot generation. So basically anything that touches within the sort of um, areas of gameplay features. Obviously stuff that's too far in the future they won't be able to answer, but feel free to ask your questions on this, I suppose. Um, the top questions currently are, since most of the CIG resources are focused on Squadron 42 now, um, how many or how much of a percentage of gameplay devs are still assigned to work on the Persistent Universe? And how does this prioritization of Squadron 42 affect the EU and US Persistent Universe gameplay feature team work? What is the blocker for life support in-game? A few years ago, you mentioned that the room system is finished and it could be easily implemented. How is progress on the resource management and engineering loop we saw a while ago with the mock hammerhead? So this is literally the sort of circuits on ships and electricity and energy moving around and fuel moving around on ships and um, you have the power relays which will need to be sort of maintained and you can turn it on and off and um, damage control is part of it as well. Uh, how will the depressurizing gameplay on solo ships without airlocks like the 300i, the Terrapin and the Aurora work? Are there any plans to add organization management tools to the game this year? Bank accounts, fleets, ways of organizing, maybe little UIs, uh, sort of just names of what org you're in above your head. Wouldn't that be useful? And um, if you're at war with them, uh, different colors for orc members compared to um, party members or um, other people, it, it, that'd be super, super useful. In regards to mining, is the plan to still eventually have uh, subsurface deposits and veins that we can tap into with our miners, as stated in both the prospect Q&As and the land came Q&As. Uh, is life support still planned to be limited to prevent people using ships as a clown car? Is it planned this year to add the ability to transfer ships under control of friends without being in the game? I do really want Cloud Imperium to have better uh, permissions and organization um, 
controls and settings and stuff like that. That would be really, really useful. It was said that gameplay will go through Squadron 42 first, then move to the Persistent Universe. Does this mean that gameplay like exploration, cargo hauling, etc. are no longer going to be worked on from this point forward until Squadron 42 releases? There's a lot of important questions there, um, and hopefully Cloud Imperium will go uh, away to answer most of those and more. There's, there's hundreds more, or at least dozens more questions. I'd like to hear anything on future gameplay 3.17 onwards personally and how development plans and roadmaps have been affected by the changes at Cloud Imperium and the sort of release strategy um, and what this means going forward. So um, make sure you upvote questions that you like um, and go on that thread, ask questions, bam, I'll, I'll link that down below. Talking about threads, there was a thread on Jumptown Variable Profits that Cloud Imperium put up about Jumptown 2.0. Uh, Xylo here said, as some of you noticed, the current active dynamic event offers variable profits, depending on factors such as time, location, etc. More specifically, this means that spawn rates will fluctuate per run, varying potential earnings per hour. In future events, likely in the 3.18 cycle, we'll also look to test fluctuating value per commodity. This is all intended an important step as we look to test the variable payout functionality, which will eventually be determined dynamically based on player behavior. There's a dedicated Spectrum section if people want to post and give updates to Cloud Imperium and give feedback on that stuff. There were a few questions answered in that thread as well by Zylo from people asking. Uh, so someone was saying, well, with these sort of things where you've made changes, uh, especially when it's dynamic and changed from um, when we recently played it, it would be good to actually have an announcement prior to the implementation rather than after, because otherwise people are like, is jump time broken? Is this not working as intended? You're not getting the feedback you want because, well... Uh, people just assume that something's changed, but you haven't announced that. So uh, Zylo said, we completely agree and we'll make sure to share any further tweaks such as additional fluctuation likely to come in the 3.18 cycle. Uh, in regards to uh, narcotics and maize being sold for more money or different rates, um, there was a question and uh, basically Zylo said, uh, for this run, the sort of value of narcotics is static and only spawn rates are fluctuating however it's likely that in the 3.18 cycle that they're going to test fluctuating values as well someone asked if there was going to be changes to the jump town outposts uh, so the uh, three different um, outposts that the um, sort of that, they've already been uh, sort of updated when jump town 2.0 originally came out um, but um, uh, are they going to be updated and changed further? Silo said, I don't have any information on this at this time, but the team is indeed looking closely at all aspects of the event, including layouts of the labs. Uh, it's good that Clan Imperium are making these dynamic events more dynamic. It makes it a lot more interesting as well. I do want some structure to them so that I can then affect as a player and I can sort of understand and go, you know what, there's been a lot of activity here. It's likely this event's going to start now or uh, there's a huge amount of profit to be made in this particular narcotic or, or, or whatever. So I can uh, expect um, some uh, friction because other players are going to be going for that or now's a good time to do that. So I want some uh, ability to understand and interpret what's going on in the verse rather than it be random. But at the moment, Cloud and Perium are very much just trying different numbers and seeing what works, what doesn't. Cloud and Pyramid are working on lots of elements of that dynamic universe that Tony Zerovic talked about at various sort of points over last year um, that are supposed to be phased into the game soon. Um, this will all tie into that, where I would assume prices of maize would change based on the economy, the times and activation of events like this would be sort of activated when certain criteria are met rather than on a schedule. I mean, some things might be scheduled and might make sense to be scheduled. Other things, not so much. Both the Nine Tails Lockdown and Jump Down 2.0 are currently available to play in Star Citizen Alpha 3.16, and I'll, I'll link their schedules down below, but I believe they're running until uh, March 6th or around there. Um, something that I get asked about regularly, and it's obviously when is 3.17 coming out, um, so I'm expecting to start seeing it being tested at least on Evocati and sort of first wave PTU sort of uh, stuff mid-March, and then uh, the sort of rough release for open PTU or live is the end of March this year. Will 3.17 get a full wipe? We don't know yet, is the answer to that. Cloud Imperium prefer to not wipe where possible. We are getting to the stage though where we might see uh, wipes potentially due to server meshing work, um, networking stuff, um, sharding, uh, the cargo overhaul, things that um, mean that databases might change or um, kind of appear and want to test um, something in the economy um, or, or something like that. So uh, that means it's more likely to have a wipe with some of these patches but it certainly doesn't mean they will and once we know I'll say um, boom. That's it for the news update today. Are you expecting wipes with 
uh, 3.18 or later this year for Star Citizen patches or do you hope that they won't wipe and maybe they won't need to? Uh, have you been playing Jump Town or the Nine Towers Lockdown in the latest iterations? Have you been enjoying the Free Fly? What gameplay questions would you like Cloud Imperium to answer? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Mummy, my friend told me at school today that that Star Citizen was a scam. Oh, Tim, is that why you got into a fight? Yes, Mummy. The only scam is people stealing all your internet infos and blocking your ability to watch things on Netflix and such with regional-based access. That's why we use our words, Tim. You should have told those bullies to get NordVPN, and also that Star Citizen is the best damn space sim ever. <laughs> yes, these two people are right. Get NordVPN, and also, Star Citizen's great. Also, Timmy was a 35-year-old teacher at the school. And it wasn't even a school, it was a pub, and he was a barman. Every month we have a ship giveaway, and for February 2022, it's for an Aegis Saber, the high-tech medium fighter with loads of firepower, but it comes in an auspicious red paint scheme as part of the Red Festival, as well as lifetime insurance and a Star Citizen game package. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning is comment on any of my videos made during the month. You can further support the channel by clicking the join button underneath any of my videos. You can also donate or become a Patreon. Your feedback though from comments really helps the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, if you're looking for a diegetic little controlly boy um, that makes your Star Citizen experience and potentially some other games pretty good fun on your touchscreen devices, then check out Game Glass. You've got that, you've got NordVPN links, you've got loads of other stuff all in the links below. Click them all. Click them all. Maybe not all of them. That would be madness.